Hello and welcome to this episode of the Property Forum Chat Show with myself, Nicholas Woolwork, um, CEO of Property Forum and the Red Brick Group. We've got an exciting show for you today um, and we're going to hear some interesting stories, hopefully. We're going to hear some um, you know, current rules and regulations around the eviction process. Um, and I'm going to be joined by Paul Champlina. Um, I'll introduce him shortly. But um, you know, if you're interested in property education, good quality content such as this, do subscribe to the channel, click the bell icon to make sure you get future alerts to Property Forum TV's YouTube and my guest YouTube channel. Hopefully they've got one and any of the social media profiles, make sure you click on because it's all about giving you guys excellent content. Um, for those of you that haven't met me before and don't know too much about me, I'll quickly introduce myself. Um, so say, I'm Nicholas Woolwork. I'm the CEO of Property Forum, the largest international property chat forum in the world. Um, we cover all sort of international areas. Um, I've recently written international um, in investing in international real estate for dummies, um, which is a globally released book, which I'm sort of hugely excited to be able to get some of this content out there on a global scale. Um, we run a huge property development company and we develop a lot of um, investment blocks. We do residential conversions, all this kind of stuff. So we come from a place of, you know, you know, I would like to think huge experience of dealing with tenants, um, dealing with the occasional eviction, which, um, you know, I've got Paul on today. I've actually got an eviction running through with Paul at the moment. Um, so if the tenant is watching, be warned, Paul is on the case. Um, but without further ado, I'd like to introduce uh, Paul. Um, now, Paul is um, one of the most respected eviction experts in the country. His main website is landlordaction.co.uk. He's often referred to as the landlord's friend and has spent over 25 years in the legal field helping landlords and letting agents with tenant problems. So welcome to the show, Paul. Can I just get you to do a real quick introduction for us about you, your companies, and how you're represented? I'm Paul Champlain. I'm founder of Landlord Action. I'm brand ambassador for Hamilton Fraser. And I also star on Channel 5's Nightmare Tenants Slum Landlords, which is actually on tonight, uh, housing, uh, housing Nightmares. I'm on next week. Uh, at 10 o'clock, which is extreme eviction. Love that show, and, awesome. <laughs> uh, and I represent many companies such as Landlord Action, Hamilton Fraser, My Deposits, Property Redressing, Client Money Protect, Landlord Zone, Total Landlord Zone, you name it. Uh, so we, we're a big organisation offering products and education to landlords. Thank you, Paul, really appreciate that. Um, I guess um, let's jump straight into some questions here that have been sent in. So anyone that's watching on the live stream, thanks for watching, thanks for the comments. Um, could you please jump in, and you are, thank you everyone, we're getting some questions coming in live. What we wanna do is get you, you know, answering live questions. We try and yeah. give priority to everyone that's live to make it interactive and a bit more fun. Um, we've got Alison Vassilou, thank you Alison for commenting there. Um, can you serve section 21 notices after four months to expire at the end of the original term? So the answer to your question now, and that was another change, uh, that, that law change came out of the deregulation. Actually, that was my law change, as well as the six-month ex expiry term period. So yeah. normally, when you serve a Section 21 notice, it has a six-month lifespan. But if you're serving a Section 21 notice that has a six-month lifespan, you won't be able to issue proceedings. So now they've extended it to 10 months. So the answer to Alison's question is, after four months, you serve a Section 21 notice. That's a six-month notice period. So effectively, the tenant is going to have a 10-month tenancy, not a six-month tenancy, as at this uh, moment in time. And if the tenant doesn't leave at the end of that notice, and you want your property back, you need to move into it or sell it or whatever, you have a four-month window to issue the claim at court. Right, okay, okay. Very interesting. Okay, we've got uh, Chitty Babu. Thanks for your question, Chitty. How is, um, how is it different company eviction from normal tenants. So it depends on the company, you know, I guess company, it depends yeah. on the tenancy agreement in the first place, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, you know what, we do a lot of these, we do a lot of guaranteed rent, rent to rent companies doing it, uh, you know, uh, service accommodation, all that type of stuff. If you've got a company let, it's it falls outside of an assured short term tenancy in the Housing Act 1988. You serve a notice to quit, which effectively is your, your, your equivalent section eight or section 21 notice, it's called a notice to quit, depending on the time, period it has in the contract. If the tenant doesn't leave, then the process is more or less the same at court. You wait, issue court proceedings, get a hearing date, uh, apply to the court, get a possession order, a money order, uh, and your costs, and then you get the bailiffs in. So the process is more or less the same. Be clear, when you go to court and get a possession order and a money order, and this is where landlords forget, the money order is not a county court judgment. It's only a money order when you enforce it. What we do at Landlord Action, we've got a campaign at the moment where we do fixed fees for debt recovery. Because a lot of landlords will say, you know, trying to collect money from tenants, Nicholas, 
uh, ex-tenants at that that move on somewhere. A lot of them don't have any assets, and trying to track them down is, is quite difficult. Well, that's the but first that problem, isn't order, it? <laughs> it? Then they actually get a county court judgment, and it will show up on their credit rating further down the line. Okay. I thought I thought when they got and this is my we like, thankfully touch wood we, we don't do too many of these so you know I thought that once they'd got the judgment in court for the money order that was the county court judgment. No, it's not, and that's where people trip up. It's ah, not. It's okay. it's a it's a, it's a the, the the key to the possession proceeding. It is a possession order with rental is stated. It's not a money okay. judgment. Okay. It's only a money judgment if you enforce it at the court, so you could get an attachment of earning. Right, send a okay. chemical bailiff in a third party. Order. The problem is doing debt recovery, and it's how long's a piece of string. You have to have information about your tenant. The great thing now about tenants is tenants talk about themselves on social media. So you can see on LinkedIn they've got a job. But you yeah. have to have a home address to be able to enforce it and serve them. So we do do debt recovery, but I mean, you know, 80% of the time landlords just don't pursue the debt they, because it's been such a nightmare evicting a tenant, they want to move on. But you've got six years to enforce it. Yeah, six years. And I'll tell you what, the reason I know that is that we had a tenant in uh, London six years ago and about two months before the end of that six years, um, it was a debt recovery company that had been chasing them. Every few months they'd do a check to see if he popped up. And this guy was like a ghost, you know, he wasn't registering anywhere with anything, you know, no job, no, no, no real name, no utility bills, nothing. And then he popped up a couple of months before the end of the six years and we got, you know, we got a, about 1500 quid off him and he's now paying I think £100 a month to right, gradually right. pay yeah, off his... You've done well, because don't forget, tenant circumstances, Nicola, it's changed. A lot of tenants want to be homeowners. Yeah. If you've got a judgment, you can't get a mortgage. And think about what's happening now. Yeah. We, just, we literally started two weeks ago a new business called Total Landlord Mortgages, and I speak to the mortgage broker, and a third of those, third of those mortgage applications now have been turned back by lenders, you know, but yeah. a lot of people want to, want, want to buy properties that are tenants and actually have mechanical judgment and of course it helps other landlords, which is really important. We see a problem also, Nicholas, where you evict a tenant, and we have a problem with serial bad tenants that go from one to another, and they prey on landlords, they're the worst type of tenants to get. And I try and expose those on, on the TV show. They are the extreme cases. And so you get some landlords that might have a tenant that's not paying the rent, but he give that tenant a good reference just to get him out, yeah. move the problem on to someone else. It happens a lot, you know, buy to let is very, very contested. Two and a half million landlords. Um, and it is, you know, it's about like, a lot of landlords won't will, will give good references to tenants that are bad tenants. We had we had a reference once. I learned my lesson on that side, the hard way being a landlord. And th there's two sides to this, right? It's, it's kind of, you want to give a bad reference because then you're protecting other people and you're protecting the industry. But on the flip side, if you do, they stay in the property, they can't leave. Quite, it's a catch twenty two. We've got, we've got a, we, we, when we bought land, Landlord Zone in two thousand eighteen, we also bought a company with it, which we might label called TenantVerified.co.uk, okay. which is for self managed landlords doing referencing. You know, rent guarantee. If you think about the rent guarantee market, a lot of the rent guarantee companies, uh, and there was a ruling that happened a couple of days ago about business interruption, uh, where they weren't paying out because of the COVID nineteen, uh, and uh, but now I think they're going to have to start paying out. So rent guarantee. Is, is important, but obviously premiums are going to go much higher. All right, that's amazing. Okay, um, just quick um, reminder: we are on YouTube at the moment. Um, Paul's giving away some of his info there and some details. So jump onto his websites and connect with him. And um, if you need some help with evictions now, if you're live watching, post your questions. I see a few more coming in. I'm going to get to these in a moment, but do ask your I've questions. Got, I've got, I've, I'm going to, I'll prove it's live, Nicholas. Yep. I'm going to get. We'll have a competition once there. Okay. <laughs> What's he doing? There we go. go. Just wait a minute. When we're proving live, I've got a book. Okay. Yeah. Kate Faulkner called The Landlord's Friend. We love Kate Faulkner. Yeah. She we works with Kate, us on property Kate summits. Kate back a long, long way. So we, the second bit is called The Landlord's Friend. Nicholas, you're the judge. The best question to me will win the book signed. Okay. Uh, brilliant. Nice one. So that's okay. that's an incentive for everyone out there. Get on there. Get a free book from Paul and Kate. Kate's a fantastic lady, by the way. We work with her on property summits. Um, which is a lovely sort of educational seminar thing that we do. Uh, jump on propertysummits.com if you're interested in that. And Kate um, generally chairs that for us, um, which is fantastic. So we've got a question here from then. Alison's jumping on. She's like four comments in a row from Alison Vasilou here. And she's looking quite hot for the book at the moment, Paul, I must admit. Um, <laughs> so she's got a specific question. Um, I issued court proceedings on a regulated tenant who is now 17 months in arrears and has been overseas for seven years. 
wow. it says his intention is to come back home. Do we need to reserve? Oh yeah, do we need to reserve? What's that? Issued February 2020. Okay, so I don't know if she's using solicitors. You should use this as a regulated tenant. A regulated tenant, everyone, is someone that's allowed to be in the property basically until they they die or they or they're yeah. in massive breach of tenancy. Seventeen months rent arrears is very very uh, high. No, it was um, regulated tenants pay. Really Seventeen small. months, Paul. Seventeen months rent arrears. Seventeen months rent arrears. Seventeen months rent arrears, but yeah. but they've when been overseas private, for seven years. When I was a private investigator, Nicholas. I used to do investigations into regulated tenants make because a lot okay. of them would keep the property and they sublet them out. Oh, so she okay. needs to gain evidence prove that this guy is living abroad and there's ways of doing it with private investigators. Put that evidence before a judge. God knows when she's going to see a judge with obviously what's going on. Oh, probably, uh, yeah. But uh, if you need some help, and I don't know who's doing that, by all means, uh, I'll give my email address at the end uh, and then you can email me. But you should be able to get a possession order based on what you're telling me. But it's about the evidence. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Is that what tw tw she's saying? Twenty-five k, twenty-five thousand pounds worth of rent is that apparently equates to, by the look of it. Um, wow. And she is using solicitors. So um, tricky one. Tricky she one. She should be a getting the a solicitor should have told her to get the evidence to prove that he's abroad. You know, might be council tax. What? Yeah. You okay. know, get, getting neighbours doing surveillance. It, it's not hard to to, to prove. Okay. Her she's. Name. She's, oh, she's saying she's got the evidence. So what does she do now then? She needs to just put that before a judge. Well, yeah, she should, her solicitors should be guiding her. You know, the problem you also have is you have a lot of solicitors, Nicholas, that don't specialise in landlord and tenant. They might do yeah. 10 different things in, in, in law. Uh, so she needs to make sure that the evidence that goes before a judge. She's got a timely hearing to produce that and get a possession order. Okay, all right, interesting. Um, here's a funny one for you. Um, for smoking weed in a property, from uh, from Steph, there you go. This is a good one. Yeah. Um, breach of contract. Would Section Eight be the best way to deal with it, or by Section Twenty One? Also, if you okay. issue so the Section Twenty Eight, what's the time to go? Uh, to be honest, tenant smoking weed in property is very it's very common. It's the norm. You know, it's reality. Uh, it, it could be a breach of tenancy, of course. But do you want to wait a year to go before your judge and get a possession order on the grounds that it's discretionary? What you need to do, it's about communication, it's about speaking to tenants. I don't know if it's an HMO or it's affecting other tenants, because obviously HMOs are the most are the most difficult to manage, especially when there's a problem in a house. So you need to, I mean, I, I, you know, you need to be able to have those conversations and say to the tenant, you know, you've got to stop this. You know, evicting a tenant is a last resort. No one wants to evict a tenant, especially if it's a family and, and going through COVID-19. Mm -hmm. But I mean, if you're getting that scenario where then most probably the best bet because section eight is now the same time frame as section 21 so you're better off just doing the section 21 to be honest yeah okay. maybe maybe we can talk about section 21 we've got time and I'll, I'll update everyone about that as well okay okay sounds good um so chandrik patel here is asking he's saying he's got a letting agent managing a property on a guaranteed rent basis so presumably the letting agent's giving him guarantee rate yeah. um but since march since, since march they've not paid full rent are they they're paying varying amounts what can he do so what you can do i've been doing a lot of work in the guaranteed rent market to be honest what happens is because of covid uh these guaranteed rent comes and you'll you'll see on my latest series of nightmare tenants the sixth series which i think it's going to come out in october i filmed it pre-covid i exposed two guaranteed rent dodgy guaranteed rent comes you were agents in east london nicking the rents not passing it on I'm really going to wow. confront them so what they can do, what he needs to do is he will have a company contract with that company. It's not an AST because then they sublet and then they... So what he needs to do is, is it may be that if the renter is accruing, and they're not getting the money and they're juggling because a lot of these, some of these companies that don't do it, they borrow from Peter to pay Paul. He needs to serve a notice to quit on them. Uh, if you need some help, by all means, email me after. We're very experienced in doing that. And, it, and also the problems that we've guaranteed rent when it goes wrong, Nicholas, you lose control of the property, you don't know who's yeah. in the property. Yeah, it's you a know, bit like subletting, he, isn't it? He, he may want to go to the property, Nicholas, and find out, you know, who's in there, how many tenants have they been paying, mm. you know, getting proof. Because it may be some of these agencies, these rogues, will turn around and say, oh, I'm not getting the money from the tenant because of COVID, this, that, whatever, and they, they could be lying. Yeah, yeah, exactly. God knows who, God knows who's in there, basically, and what they're doing. They could be getting full rent from 
10 tenants in an HMO and just not passing anything on because they're... Which is common. And we yeah. see that. We see that in our organisation. We run Client Money Protect, which is a okay. government-backed scheme for client money protection for agents, not so much a guaranteed rent. And obviously, the, 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 the worry is, is that you do have agents that will dip in a client account to, to fund their businesses. Yeah, okay. Yeah, nightmare. Do you cover... Um, this is from Neil, actually, a pre-registered question. Keep the live questions coming in, guys. We will prioritise those if we possibly can. Um, he's saying, do you cover stuff in Scotland? And you know, what, what is the process in Scotland, if you know? Um, is it the same as England? It's a bit different. We don't, I am, I would, I've always wanted to set up a land on action in Scotland and franchise it, but it hasn't really happened yet. Uh, where it is in Scotland, they use a first-tier tribunal system. To be honest, it hasn't really worked because they offer the services to landlords for free, and that's never going to work. There's been big backlog. They got rid of the equivalent of our Section 21, but I think it's called an 86 form. Uh, and now you have to give a ground for possession, okay? Obviously, that is, you know, though the, the time spans, and you know, they had six-month notice periods and whatever. The process is different, uh, and uh, tenants will, in Scotland have stronger rights, okay? Uh, but, I mean, obviously, uh, if you do need a, a solicitor, Again, I can recommend a, a solicitor in Scotland that specialise in landlord and tenant. Okay, that's very helpful, thank you. Um, we've got the astute landlord has asked, in your experience, Paul, what percentage of MCOL, so money claim on lines, I guess, uh, results in payment to the landlord? I know Paul has a few doubts right, about I mean, that, it's, that, it's quite It's quite apt that, that the person asking the question was called astute. Okay? Uh, there um, you go. I would say, uh, you know what? That's impossible to answer. I mean, I, I've got more chance of, of literally telling you the lottery tonight uh, for the big draw of a Camelot than actually telling you how he landlords. What I would say is I know from experience that we literally, and we're going to try and change this, is literally I would say 80% of landlords do not pursue their rent arrears. It's that high because they don't want, they, they don't want to just throw money, good money after bad. Yeah. They don't know where their tenant is. They found out the tenant's got loads of debts. They psychologically they've been affected by dealing with the eviction and dealing with the tenant. They want to turn over a new leaf. So you know, I think what's going to happen is Nicholas going forward. Uh, I've got a pal of mine, one of my oldest mates. I lived in Brighton for five years. He's one of the biggest landlords in Brighton. He's got almost nine hundred tenants. Wow. When the law came in, when the law came in, Nicholas of six month notice periods, he, from that Monday, every let that he did, he wanted a guarantor. He's a homeowner. Okay. Right. You're going to see now going forward, landlords scared about the tenants and the abolishment of Section 21. You'll see landlords being much more diligent, referencing wise of the tenant. Yeah. I think there's an effect with regard to vulnerable tenants getting on the ladder, and I think you'll get loads more sign ups on ASTs with guarantors. Landlords looking and, and trying to be diligent and trying to protect themselves. I mean, we always we always wanted to give uh, you know get guarantors, and for particularly problematic looking tenants that looked a bit risky. We would ask for it, um, but it's it's hard as, harder said than done, isn't it? Because you've got this balance where there's a lot of competition for rents at the moment. You know where we've had the student issues, people in HMOs, the student tenants have been right. that they've been looking for professional tenants for for six month period maybe. So you're all fighting for you know people, and there's exactly. less movement. You're you're right. I mean, you, look, you know what? Lands have had to be really resilient, very diverse during COVID. You know, I called. I think I called second week in. I said the commercial property market be absolutely slaughtered and I'm yeah. right. Uh, and I said out of the obviously the, the resi market, the, the student market was going to be the worst affected mm -hmm. and the guaranteed rent to rent market. And of course HMO landlords where you've had tenants that are obviously in retail, in hospitality, you know, and various different industries where and, and obviously tenants moving back home, you know, before lockdown. Uh, so I think that you know you have you've had a lot of parent guarantors that are trying to get out of student tenancies because of course University shut down for a year. Okay, that's moving a bit back. Then you had those 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 landlords looking to uh, try and relet and maybe trying to relet to key workers. You know, doing what they're doing. I mean, I you know, I mean, we talked before uh, before we came on, Nicholas. I did an eviction yesterday morning, at six in the morning in West London. Of uh, uh, it was a twenty four uh, bed sit room uh, building in in uh, Bayswater. And there was uh, eight illegal squatters that broke into the property, and there was, really? you know, there was prostitutes, there was pimps there, there were people with knives. It was quite dangerous. Oh I don't want to team. And of course, it, it squatting became illegal in 2012, and I did some campaigning on that. So any residential property 
squatter broke in, it, they could be put in prison for up to six months, fine five thousand pounds. Really? Um, wow. And what they did that those people that own that building during lockdown because it was empty, they did a deal directly with the council on nightly rates. And they did nightly rates and then some people stayed and then they got all their friends and fortunately some of those people were undesirables and then the whole building got took over. We Jesus. thankfully got it back. But uh, you know, it's uh, people lockdown caused so much pressure on landlords worrying about renting their properties, they went down various routes they normally wouldn't do. Yeah, understood. So they're going for more risky strategies, taking on riskier tenants, income. just to try and get some income. Yeah, I don't think I don't think we go down that route. You know, we sticking to professionals. I mean, what we do, we are. Um, you know, again, we we were chatting a moment ago, but we're we're investors, and but we develop to be investors. So we take a lot. You know, we do office to residential schemes. We've got one just finishing up in Newby of forty two studios, um, and. You know, it's about creating an affordable product at the right price, and I think that's what's needed in the industry anyway. You know, you've obviously got HMOs that are kind of you know the lower end of the market with professionals before you start renting your independent flats, and we're just we're sat just above that as a sort of micro studio, but you know, high quality micro studio at an affordable rent with all your bills included. It's kind of like a mega HMO scenario, but. You know, but I mean, on, on that point, on that point, and that sounds really good. I mean, I, I do a lot of work, a lot of work with uh, build to rent. You know, if you ask it's a bit like landlord that, yeah. in the street, if you ask the landlord in the street what build to rent is, most of them don't ever think what it is. No, build to rent is. I mean, we do a lot of work build to rent. I act for operators across the business, and now you've got to think about the the the, the, the type of tenant now, the millennial type of tenant. They want more, okay? And unfortunately, yes, they're driven by the property, not by the landlord. And there's more pressure on landlords to up their game with everything. And that's where a lot of landlords are struggling, okay? Not being professional, not treating it like business. But you know what, Nicholas? If you could go and rent a property from me, which is above a shop, and you're paying 1,500 quid a month, and it's in London, and the average rent in London is 1,600 quid a month, right? Yeah. You rent 1,500 quid a month, or see a flat for 1,625 pound a month. So it's 125 pound a month, but actually in that big block, that big shiny block, You've got a yoga room, you've got a wee work room, you've got your online, you've got your on-site security, you've got a dog walking service, you know, you've got a gym. You do that. And that's what's happening now in big in big areas. There's a lot more bills rent and landlords don't understand that that's their big competition when there is yeah. more investment coming in, you know. And I think the you know, the market where well, the way it's gone over the last few few years has been, in my opinion, kind of pushing the government change has been pushing more to the professional they almost that. institutional landlord isn't it um, they want that. They've, told, they've told me that i'm on various different working groups for the, the government they want that yeah they do exactly. want that and they want landlords to know their legal obligations and yeah. you know that's why and part of the reason why we brought landlords over a couple of years ago was to educate and you know we work very closely i mean I, I, anyone that's watching now I, you know one bit of advice if you're going to walk away is join the national residential landlords association the nrla 75 pound a year which is tax deductible to get access to the advice line to get access to the latest forms and latest news you know it's and that's where landlords struggle because we know 80 85 percent of those landlords only have one or two properties they don't treat yeah. it as a as a business they don't treat it as a business you know, it's something i'm always preaching when i'm kind of mentoring property investors and helping them get going um it, it's always about you know you've got to treat this as a business it's not a sideline you can't buy one or two properties anymore and make a good income from it um there's too much pressure on it there's too much um, you know, pressure from government, tax, you've got, you know, Section 24 tax came in as well, and that, like, put huge pressure on private landlords. So, you know, if you don't treat it like business and scale it up as well, you've kind of, it's kind of all but or nothing a bit now, isn't it? Yeah, but everything's gone nuts, though, because, you know, I, I, I you know, because obviously the stamp duty concession, which is until the end of March, you know, I speak to agents, I speak to big investors, landlords, and whatever, you know, I had a mate in my man the corner, he got 40 grand over asking, you know, yeah. you know, people are saying, I mean, of course, you know, until the, the job losses kick in and you don't, I think I've always said, you know, a Q1 next year, you'll see a true indication of where we are with the market, you know, uh, but I mean, I, you know, I, I, I spoke to someone, he had something like eight offers on his property, you know, he was selling, which he, he lived in. I mean, it's, mm. it's, it's gone nuts. It's mad. I think that's, I think that's, well, I don't know. I don't know if it's across the board. I was going to say, is that just res the residential homeowner market? Or is that in the in the investment market as well? What's your I think the investment opinion? market, people might just want to, I mean, I'm looking at buying some investments and stuff, whatever. I'm just waiting till next year. Oh, yeah. I, okay. I, I wanna, you know, trying to source a deal, do a deal, whatever. 
because everything's overpriced. You know, uh, I'll, I'll just wait. I'm not desperate. No, fair enough. I mean, we got a couple of good deals in COVID. I'd say right now it's tough to buy. We were offering on a, um, or a client of mine, I should say, um, who I'm assisting, was offering on a site down in, in um, Surrey. And the vendor wants silly money for it, like silly money. And you're like, well, we might be in a little mini boom here, but I don't, you know, I'm not sure you'll get that. If they get that, I'm, I, hands up, um, we are yeah. in a boom and they've done really well and they've managed to take advantage of it. I hope, I hope it works for them. Um, disappointed for my client they didn't get it. But I think, um, yeah, it's a funny little period. I think we're in this mini little tiny boom, aren't we? Um, which won't last. Um, so it's about kind of, you know, if you're buying anything now, that's fine. Make sure it's still the right price. There's still deals to be had. Make sure you buy at the right price and just make sure you're doing it for the long term, like everything with property. You know, and if you're building like us, development sites, we know what we can do with it. We know how much we can pay. As long as we don't pay over the odds, we can still make are money. You seeing, are you seeing an ease up, Nicholas, on, on planning? Um, Have you seen a bit of attitude change a little bit on, well, on planning? On, well, of course. Especially on well, development. Yeah, a little, I mean, a little bit. We've obviously had these PD rules in um, for some time now, since 2003, the Office of Resi PD rules and more relaxed yeah. PD rules. And they're bringing in um, next year a, re a revision of that. I think it's in July uh, 2021. Yeah. We've obviously just moved in September across to the new Class E system, which amalgamates a lot of the other classes, all the B1s yeah. and D1s, all that kind of stuff. Um, but as it is, this sort of office to residential PDs haven't changed per se. So it, it remains to be seen. more of that. Be loads more. Though. I think there'll be loads more, won't there? All these empty offices coming in. So, you know, if you're in a position, you know, that we are thankfully touch wood, you know, there'll be some great stock to be had um, at a cheap price next year as it starts to drip into the market. Correct. Correct. Um, and, 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 you know, retail as well, when you're on sort of the outskirts of retail, um, some of that redundant retail is going to come in. Um, and, and on that point, actually, it's funny you say, because I was looking at doing, uh, I get pitched to do TV stuff. I mean, it's only part of what I do. Do, I'm, it's quite versatile what I do is you know high street to homes that that will happen especially yeah in, you know smaller towns we'll see a lot more of that happening I mean trying to re regenerate uh, local community and having you know local businesses and stuff but you know uh, you know we broke loads of stories on landlords uh, you know with British land and I think they only one quarter I mean what, they only got 43 percent of their rents you know uh, I mean the game has changed now and I think obviously I think with regards to commercial leases and stuff I actually think that they're going to be, uh, that the rents will be linked to turnover. I think that's going to happen, what happens in America and Canada. I think that that, that, that will happen in due course. That would be very interesting. Yeah, absolutely. A uh, quick question from um, Alison. This is a good question, actually. Uh, Alison Vassilou. She's been the most active on our chat here, Paul. She's hogging, she's hogging the limelight. She's doing well, actually. Um, she's asking on this one, um, how many, you know, she has, oh, sorry, let me start again. We have many tenants asking, to stay for a period of time after their original term has expired, for example, four week or a six week extension, can we do this with a side letter? Um, you know, is there any particular notices she needs to uh, give them or whatever? I think I think what you have to do, I mean, look, you serve a notice, you serve a, look, it, it depends on the scenario. So, you know, if obviously you only serve a notice if you feel you need to serve a notice. That's why I kind of yeah. like, you know, I, I helped change the law where, where tenants, and you'll remember this, Nicholas, where tenants moved in, landlords were serving notices at the time they moved in, which was terrible practice. Right, yeah. Right, right. Right. Yeah, and that's why they, when I was on the deregulation act, I came up with the idea, we came up with the idea of serving after four months, you know, and having six month lifespan. Uh, you know what it is? You can, what you what I tend to do, and I'm, because I, I, I'm belt and braces, and I, I try and dot my dot eyes and space, I think that if you're happy with the situation, I don't like putting things in writing, I just like, I would do it, you know, it, it would kind of like, so you don't make it formal, like you're not creating a new tenancy. So I think you can just basically say to the tenant, you know, verbally, yes, I'm okay with that. And then just keep on top of it, you know, and they've been paying yeah. the rent. Because obviously if they're a good tenant, you just want them to stay as long as possible. You yeah, know? well, exactly. Then, you want them to extend and extend. They might just be extending to um, stay, for, you know, they don't know what their job is or their job move's been put right. on hold. Keep them, you know, as long as you're not, just keep them, don't, yeah. don't, but I mean, ideally you want to sign them up for another tenancy agreement, but they don't want that, then that's fine, if you can stay, just let me know, just keep me on a month to month basis, but yeah. don't put anything in right, I just, I, I've always been a bit funny about that, is, you know, if, if, only if there's, it's been problematic in the past, you know. Yeah, exactly, and I think, you know, with those kind of tenants, if they're good tenants, it's not a bad situation, they're asking for an extent, they're right. fully paying their rent, just say, look, withdraw your notice, which might be four weeks, and submit it again when you're ready. 
You know? Yeah, yeah, definitely you can do that. That's what I tend to do. Don't forget, keep... even if a tenant submits a four-week notice saying I'm going to leave and they don't leave, you can't use their le letter as a notice period to evict. It's up to the landlord to serve a notice, and at the moment it's six months. <laughs> You know? Right, so it's the same situation, and Alison's just said, yeah, what if we agree a four-week extension and then they don't leave? Um, then she's got to serve a six-month notice. She's got to serve a six-month notice, yeah. So essentially, that's the same anyway, even if she gives the extension, right? It's it the is the same. The problem you've so, got is that when you serve a... T this is the hard thing, because this is what... I mean, I might as well come onto it now, because it is relevant, and I know all about it. We, we, if you go onto Landlord Zone, we launched it yesterday, there's a report from the Lettings Industry Council that we helped compile. It's, it's called Beyond Section 21. Now, because of the six-month notice period of, of the Section 21, you know, I believe that Section 21 will be abolished in the next 12 months, okay? Mm, yeah. uh, you know, and it all started, you know, with the tenant groups, and they called it non-fault. And I actually had Pano in my office, uh, and I was on for 17 seconds. It was more of a tenant piece, saying non-fault. <laughs> There's always a fault when you serve a Section 21. Most of it is, is the landlord wants to probably back to, to sell, or actually there's rent arrears. You know, all the tenants are asking to be served because they want to be rehoused by the council or they want to move back in. So now Section 21 is going. We need to shape how Section 8 is going to be looked at. But obviously the major thing that in that report is you need major court investment to make sure the landlord gets the property back. You're going to have loads more Section 8 hearings. Yeah. Okay. How's that going to work? But COVID changed everything. I mean, I'm, I'm on the housing court consultation and I, I was speaking to judges and they, at that time, which was last November, she said, try to get uh, uh, judges and approval was difficult. But she said on the Section 21 accelerated case, which in 2015 it was 35,000, last year it was 20,000. Of course, it's much harder now because you've got a bit of a deposit deposit scheme, mm. deregulation act, gas safety, so, you know, all these different barriers. She said it takes her 15 minutes to grant a possession order on a Section 21 accelerated game. Well, I know 12, 10, 12 years ago, it used to take 90 seconds. The Section 21 is definitely going. And because of COVID nineteen, and you're serving a six month notice period, it it, it becomes it becomes, becomes you know null and void, doesn't it? Yeah, they've muted it anyway. Um, yeah. I mean, we're going to we've got we're running out a little bit of time. I wanted to get a couple more questions in. There's a good one here that uh, Chitty Chitty's asked, um, and I want to ask something around this as well. So he's saying uh, he's obviously a landlord. He's received twenty rent to rent offers. I've I receive hundreds of these bloody things They're every day. Um, you know, we want we're a fresh professional company. Blah yeah, blah yeah, blah. Yeah, yeah getting sick of having them landing on our doorstep in the letting agency yeah. um you know i've received 20 rent to rent offers varying from 900 quid to 1500 quid okay. most of them are assisted living offers and most of these rent to rent companies are six months old um how do you validate these companies um do you get okay. them back i've got by... an answer for that go for it <laughs> <laughs> don't take there's, it <laughs> there's, there's only a couple of guaranteed rent companies that i would recommend i mean i was going to set up a rent to rent or guaranteed rental association in 2014, I was too busy. Uh, I do work for the biggest guaranteed rent organisation in the country. We run their advice, and we do their legal work. They're very good. They're part of the Bell Wild Group. Is Northwoods? Okay. Yeah. Northwoods okay. have 85 offices. They are part of a big organisation with, with with big funds. There's only one company I'd recommend if they are in your area. It is Northwoods. They're pretty compliant. A lot of these rent to rent guaranteed rent companies. I am a little bit cynical. Uh, and, uh, you know, when you give that, or if, if it's too good to be true, it normally is. You know, and a lot of these companies, they don't comply with the HMO uh, laws, which are now much stringent. Your name's on the tin, so you're going to get sued, okay? Uh, right to rent change everything, because you obviously need to make sure that they're compliant and they've got a right to stay in the property. Um, you know, I don't know what the stock is. I don't know what the property is. I don't know what area you're in. You know, I don't know if you're struck. Why, you, why are you struggling to let it? You know, as a landlord, you should know that. So, you know, and of course, there is a uh, there is an advantage to go to a guaranteed rent organisation because you're guaranteed your money, and you hope you're guaranteed your money, you're not in for relet fees, and you don't have any aggro. I mean, really, you know, pay, I, mean, I always, the last couple of years, you know, when I've written this book, it's about a landlord has to put a price on their time, and that's the biggest problem they do. And that's why mm -hmm. I told you I'm, I'm writing this online course, which I'm going to be doing, which is called uh, to manage or, or to self manage or not to self manage. You know, landlords, they, they do make the mistake of thinking, oh, I'm going to save myself a little bit of money. <clears throat> I'll do the management, but they don't realise that, you know, what the gas safety rules are, you know, or yeah. if a tenant calls me up at four in the morning when they're drunk, they've lost the keys, I've got to go and let them back in. You know, you pay the extra 4%, 5% for management, you want to let an agent. You know, it, it's, the letting agents are totally and utterly underpriced and undervalued in what they do. 
of yeah. fully management because there's man hours that go in. Yeah. That, and that's why I, I train letting agents on how to attract landlords to a business. They don't, they, they don't know how to pitch themselves. I mean, you would because most people you're a landlord. So hmm. you started it up, you built your portfolio. And a lot of landlords started letting agents up because they weren't happy with the service they had, you know. Yeah, well, exactly. And we were, we were, it was also cheaper and more efficient to bring it in-house. And, and just to finish off the rent-to-rent -rent discussion, I think, you know, there's two sides to this discussion. I think rent-to-rent -rent can be a valid strategy for people doing it if they are good and if they know what they're doing and if they are up on HMO regulations, they're well-trained, they know what they're doing. So I don't want to poo-poo people that are trying to get into property and do rent-to-rent -rent on a blanket, but it needs to be done correctly. And, and the opportunity actually, isn't it, is that if you do do it properly, there is an opportunity out there, and maybe you need. You there know, is there, but you need to be good at property management. You need to be and, excellent at property I, I, management. And I think that if you're going to, I mean, the most important person for you to run a successful property portfolio is your letting agent or your guaranteed rent agent. If that is, hmm. it works because you don't have any void, you don't have any let fees, or whatever. But you need to make sure that you grill them and diligently grill them. See their company accounts, get some customer testimonials. What's their system like? How many yeah. properties have they got on? You know, ask the questions. You know, and just because one guy says he can give you an extra 25 quid a month more than the other guy, it doesn't mean he's the right company for you. Well, that's a good you know? point. Thank and you. go on forums like yours. We have forums. Ask questions. You know, mm. other landlords, every landlord makes a mistake. Every landlord makes a mistake. Share it. But, you know, giving your property away and a guaranteed rent, you lose control of that property. And I'm the back end when it all goes yeah. wrong, you know. And I, I, I try and make people streetwise, Nicholas. Yeah, I think that's key, isn't it? It's, I mean, we're still making mistakes. We make mistakes every month. You know, it's, it's about how you overcome your mistakes and yeah. you know how you um, deal with that and how you hold yourself in business with your uh, peers, with your customers, your tenants, um, yeah. as to whether you survive it or not and get through it. But um, all right, well, you know, just as a quick final uh, overview, we, we got cut off a bit at the beginning. We got a good bit of an overview for you at the uh, in the middle there because of the sound issues. But do you want to just give me a quick, where, where should people go and reach out to you? Um, best way to contact you. If people are on here watching, we've got quite a few people watching live. There'll be thousands of people watching this over the coming weeks as we both um, put it on our websites and stuff. So what, how do people reach you and, and uh, you know, if they've, got, if they've got problems and are struggling? You know, we, we, we've put one of our tenants with Paul this week that's uh, you know, not paying because actually we don't want to learn all the nitty gritty. One mistake on a contract or an eviction notice or a date on a contract, you get that wrong, the whole process starts again. So that's why, in our view, you want the best people around you, the best power team. Uh, Paul is in our power team for evictions and all of that stuff. So uh, where, yeah, where can people reach out to you, Paul? Yeah, so I'll give you my email address, which is paul at landlordaction.co.uk. The website for Landlord Action is landlordaction.co.uk. And of course, for information, which is free, and to become a subscriber, which is free, is landlordzone.co.uk. I mean, and also, our core business, and I don't want to sound like a second-hand car salesman now because I don't, but if obviously if any of you landlords want landlord insurance, uh, I can get you obviously some discounts because we, we insure about 35,000 properties for Hamilton Fraser and Total Landlord Insurance. So just email me if you want a question and I can signpost uh, to various different organisations. But uh, yeah, I mean, listen, it's good being a landlord. Uh, you know, it can be very challenging. Get professionals that know what they're doing. Uh, make sure that you allow yourself time. Is not get quick uh, rich and no, uh, treat as a business. What I mean is, people need to sleep somewhere. Demand is still strong. Definitely, we've just posted your uh, contact details in the in the chat there, Paul. So and you can you can follow me on Facebook and LinkedIn and all that stuff as well, Twitter. Excellent. Jump on all that. Well, thank you very much for coming on the show. Um, you know if. You Anyone is interested in reaching out to Paul, reaching out to us, say log on to our various social media profiles. If you like great educational content on a weekly, bi-weekly basis, we chuck in loads of great stuff on our property um, TV uh, YouTube channel. So type Property Forum TV or type my name, Nicholas Woolwork, and you will find our YouTube channel. Most of you are probably watching that on there. I know there's a few Facebookers on here I can see in the comments, but um, that's where you'll find us in future great content. So, you know, it's been an absolute pleasure dealing with Paul today. Fantastic having you on the show, Paul. Um, it's been, you know, highly insightful. Oh, you haven't told me who's the winner. Oh yeah, who's the winner? Yeah, well who's thought of. Well, look, to be honest, I think Alison's the winner. She's Alison, been, she, she, she's dominated. She's dominated. She's got uh, seven or eight comments in there. Chitty you was second. Address. 
Yeah, I'll, we'll get the address off. Re reach out to us, Alison, uh, to Paul's email address there. And um, yeah, paul at landlordaction.co.uk and he'll get that off into the post for you. And uh, make sure you subscribe and watch the next ones. I'm sure we'll be doing one um, yeah, very, very soon. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Paul. And um, we'll be online again soon. Take care.